you can see, for example, how many installs you had, how many of the installs actually had a conversion value. What was the revenue that we saw from the, from the conversion values that we got? And then finally, what is the model revenue that says, okay, we take into consideration also the installs where we didn't get a conversion value. What is the total revenue that, that we think this campaign is driving? If you're doing mobile marketing on iOS, you pretty much have to use Apple's SK ad network or skin. Of course, there's serious issues, including privacy-focused censorship thresholds. You don't get all the data, so you can't determine device-level granular marketing performance. But it also means it's hard to get great ROAS and ROI data, and that makes optimizing advertising hard. Now, there might be a solution to check it out. We're chatting with singular engineer Evitar Ram. Welcome, Evitar. Hi, John. Glad to be here. Just, uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm the, I'm a product man. <laughs> Excellent. Then not an engineer, uh, but you're pretty technical, uh, in, in as far as I I've seen, I mean, like, you know, there's, there's some code happening there. Let's start here. What's the core problem for marketers with scan? Great. So the core problem is that when Apple sends postbacks, so when Apple was now in control of the attribution, uh, process. When they send a post back that says, hey, this install is attributed to this campaign from this ad network, um, there's, they usually have a bunch of data with that, uh, with that post back. So for example, they have the conversion value, which is basically the key metric, which is used to track all the post install events. So any notion of a quality of an install is all encoded into the single metric into this conversion value. And the problem is, is that in some of these postbacks, Apple censors the conversion value. So you still know that there was an install, you know who it was attributed to, but Apple is censoring all the post install information essentially. So you have no sort of idea about what is the uh, value of this, of this install. Now we've seen this, uh, the reason Apple is doing this, by the way, is for privacy. And uh, in terms of the, the impact of this, um, we see on average that around 20% of the postbacks that represent an install, 20% of them have a censored conversion value. So if you're a, if you're a marketer and you're trying to understand um, uh, how a campaign is doing um, and you're trying to measure a ROAS or if you're trying to measure how many actions were taken uh, in CPIs, sorry, CPAs, then uh, you're essentially dealing with a very partial data set because 20% uh, of the data on average is censored. Mm -hmm. There's actually two types of censoring that Apple does. Uh, one is when they censor the conversion value. So you get a post back, but just conversion value equals null. The other is when they censor the, uh, uh, the publisher uh, app. So typically the post back does include the ID of the app that was kind of responsible for, for the click. Um, but um, in some postbacks, they also censor that. So you don't get the publisher, right? So there's two problems. Are, are, they, are they both at the same level? Are you seeing about 20% on, on both of those levels? So what we think is happening is that um, both of these censoring mechanisms are essentially use the same logic, which is what we can talk about in a minute. Um, but the publisher um, censoring is done at the publisher level which basically means it gets, uh, you get a lot more censoring of the publisher than you do of conversion values. So the, the, the censoring rates for publisher data are actually much higher. Okay. Interesting. Do you have an estimate of how much higher? Significantly, but I don't have uh, the okay. number, but yeah. Okay, yeah. So no worries. And I hear dogs in the background, so that's all good. If it comes running up, just let us know. Uh, <laughs> Uh, does that impact campaigns with different ad networks differently? I mean, we know we have campaign IDs versus scan IDs, right? And we know that some networks use a lot of campaigns uh, and use a lot of your scan campaigns as well. Talk to us a little right. bit about what you're seeing in different ad networks, who uses the most campaigns and maybe makes it more challenging. Right. So this is a really great question. And I, I think it, it all stems from sort of how we understand that the censoring happens. So what happens is that Apple uh, looks at the scan campaign ID when there's an install. So they know which scan campaign or SK ad network campaign ID this install comes from. And they look at a, at a time window, a preceding time window, 
and they count how many installs there were uh, in that time in that time frame, and they ha they apply certain thresholds. So if the number of installs were was above that threshold, then they're um, not going to censor the install, and if the number of installs is below that threshold, they are going to censor uh, that install. So they're not going to send a conversion value. So basically, that means that in order to avoid censoring, you need to have enough installs in each scan or SK ad network campaign ID. Now, the point that you bring up is really interesting because as a marketer, you're not setting up an SK ad network campaign ID, you're setting up just a campaign. And what happens behind the scenes is that the network sort of maps that campaign to multiple SK ad network campaign IDs. And the more, uh, the, the higher that ratio is. So if, if, if the network takes the campaign and maps it out to 20 different scan campaign IDs, um, then you're gonna, you're bound to run into more censoring issues. Now, the reason the networks are doing this, the reason they're mapping a single campaign into multiple scan campaign IDs is because they use that, that granularity to basically encode more information about, about that install. So you can encode the creative or the sub campaign or different attributes. So what we're seeing is that some networks, um, there's a very low ratio. So for example, uh, in Mintegral and in Liftoff, it's, it's very, uh, it's one or one and a half. So basically for every campaign that you set up, there's only one SK ad network campaign ID are, uh, running in the background. So basically, um, you, you, you should be running into fewer censoring issues. Uh, other networks like, uh, Unity and Vungle, it's, it's higher numbers. It's 4.5, 5.3. And, and app oven is, is even higher than that. Um, so you do see a uh, sort of a, lot, a, a pretty big variance in, in sort of the, these ratios. Essentially what that tells you as an app marketer then is if you're going with a network that uses a lot of campaign IDs for each scan ID, you better be going high volume. If you're not going high volume, forget about it. Your data is going to suck. You're not going to have a lot of information about how well you're doing. Uh, and I guess that applies to Facebook as well, because Facebook only gives you like nine IDs, right? For scan campaigns. Exactly. Yeah. So you can only o uh, open a certain number of, 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 of campaigns on Facebook because they do their remapping in the background. One of the interesting things that's going to happen with iOS 15 and the ability to see all the raw data is that there will be actually a bit more visibility into those ratios in networks like Facebook and Google, where right now the visibility is pretty limited. What is interesting about those networks like Facebook and AppLove and that use a lot of campaign IDs is they will actually generate internally quite a bit of information about creative and what creative works and what creative doesn't. So if you are going at volume, then you can't, maybe you don't learn that. <laughs> maybe Facebook learns that or, or app love and learns that, uh, but there is at least some creative learning there. Okay, cool. So basically what you're saying is if you want to have good data, surpass those, those, those thresholds, get above those. Now we're still missing data because of the censored activity data, this, the censored conversion right. data. What's the solution there? Right. So what we've done at Singular is that we are trying to model what those conversion values would have been had they not been censored. So we're spending a lot of time and energy trying to figure out how this mechanism works and how we could actually try to model and or basically provide an estimate that says, let's say you had a hundred installs and for 80 of those installs, you got a conversion value and for the remaining 20, you don't. Uh, we are trying to model or estimate what would be the conversion values for those remaining 20 installs. And that's a feature that we've just recently released. So uh, talk to us about that modeling process. How do you do that? And how confident are you that the model data is accurate? So, um, regarding the modeling process, so there's a bit of, there's some secret sauce there. So, um, but we, but it, a lot of it was sort of, uh, uh, based on kind of just trying to understand the data and trying to understand how and in what granularity uh, this modeling is, uh, is uh, sorry, the this, this censoring is, is working on. Regarding confidence intervals or, or how confident are we with the data? I think that's a great question. Um, like generally, we, we, we know that this is the question that we're also getting from, from, from marketers, from our clients that are asking, you know, this is all great, but like, is it worth anything? So one of the things we're trying to do is just be really transparent about it. So every time we present this metric, we'll show you like a confidence interval that tells us, um, it will, basically gives you the range of values in which we are pretty certain that the real number resides in. So for example, let's say we're trying to model uh, uh, the revenue because once we model the conversion values, we can actually model 
anything that's encoded in the in the conversion uh, values, for example, revenue or or, or, or post install events. So let's say there's a there's an SK ad network model that's that's doing revenue, and um, our modeling is going to say we think that this campaign has a um, has a revenue of a uh, hundred dollars plus minus twenty. So the plus minus twenty that's a confidence interval, and that lets you know that we're pretty certain that the real revenue is somewhere between $80 to $120. The idea is that we want to let marketers know, you know, it's an estimate. The data is missing, so there's, there's no way about it. It is an estimate, but we want to give the marketers a sense of how accurate is it and let them decide whether they, uh, to what extent they want to rely on it. Talk about some of the reactions in early testing. Are clients finding it useful? Is it, is, it, is it good data that they're using to base future buying decisions, allocation decisions on? So I think their reactions have been pretty good. For the most part, we are able to get fairly low confidence intervals, which means that it's actually fairly accurate data. Um, I think a lot of the reactions that we're getting are, this is great, like it's better than what we had before. So, I mean, everyone, you know, everyone prefer to have 100% accurate data, but I think we're more and more with SK Ad Network going into this world of, of uncertainties to some extent. Um, and so... So the, so the feedback has been, has been good and the adoption has also been uh, great. So that's a good first step. So talk to me about the data. Are you showing both the modeled and unmodeled data? So can a marketer go and dig around and see what the, the, you know, the actual data that they got is, and then the model data that you've built? Yeah, absolutely. So like you can go and you can see uh, for a given campaign, you can see, for example, how many installs you had, how many of the installs actually had a conversion value. What was the revenue that we saw from the, from the conversion values that we got? And then finally, what is the modeled revenue that says, okay, we take into consideration also the installs where we didn't get a conversion value. What is the total revenue that, that we think this campaign is driving? And you're using revenue as an example here, but I'm assuming that you're modeling any kind of conversion value, correct? Absolutely. Yeah. So we're modeling both the conversion value itself. So how many users had a conversion value of one, two, 18, 24, et cetera. And also we're modeling sort of the, the decoded conversion values. So if it's a revenue model then revenue, if it's a events model, then the events, et cetera, we're, we're modeling that as well. Yeah. Very cool. So essentially what we're seeing is an attempt to make scan more usable, uh, give you better data. Uh, something that marketers can use to base decisions on confidently within a certain level. What's next? So we do have, uh, well, we do see that there's this sort of thread that says, um, SK ad network, um, is limiting the data that marketers have. So you used to have this much data. Now you have this much data, uh, both because, uh, of the conversion value mechanism that le only lets you encode uh, 0 to 63 as a number, and also because sort of of the time frame in which you have, that you have to, to collect the post-install events, which is, which is fairly limited. Most people uh, are using like 24 hours, some people are using three days. Exactly. 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 So we do have options to do three days, seven days, et cetera, but right now what we see most commonly used is 24 hours. So. Trying to understand whether a user is, is, is valuable or not within 24 hours is, is tricky. Um, so what we want to do is we were going to build a series of features that we call SK Ad Network Events Analytics that basically try to bridge the gap between sort of the more limited data that you have now and kind of like the full data that you want and, and are used to getting uh, by using data science and different models and different machine learning uh, elements that kind of build up these estimates uh, um, for, 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 for the data that you're used to see. Yeah. Excellent. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Evie Tart. Really appreciate it. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>